Hi and welcome to the Market Alert for Monday the 13th of July 2020. So big tech bid, small cap skid as gold hits a new high during Friday's trading session. So let's take a look and see what happened during the trading session on Friday, uh, the morning and afternoon. Before we look at the rest of the week ahead and where the markets have been trading on the overnight. So let's have a look at uh, Friday's trade. So an attempt in the pre-market session to move back above the low failed. We see the weakness starting to come back in and then they sold. We see some profit taking and prices then failing at the 20 bar moving average, closing back below the 5 bar and then back down to the BRN, the 12,400 level before the opening of the trading session. So prices then uh, open and they attempt to move higher, which uh, we can see there. Very uh, volatile to get back to the low. As I've mentioned before, the low is really important at the moment. There is weakness around in the market and get prices back above this level is really, really important. So we see some selling uh, follow here with the red there and then prices back above the 20 bar moving average. But this plays out uh, for some time. There is a battle uh, between uh, the buyers and sellers and eventually prices then put in a sell which isn't filled and then we have a buy and uh, we're off to the upside. Now we've got uh, resistance here and we've got resistance here and uh, they will need to be taken out if prices are to move higher. Otherwise, we're likely to see some potential weakness. So now the market's got to get uh, back above the low as well. This is also uh, uh, imperative if prices are to move back to the upside. And eventually, we'll see prices uh, drive through the BRN and up to uh, the resistance to the left there. Prices uh, continue through and uh, time to move the stop to break even. And of course, as prices move higher, we can expect uh, some weakness. And there we see the profit taking coming into the market and the absence of new buying. And it's at this point when you're sitting on a decent profit to make a decision on whether to take those profits or not. And uh, you'll see prices uh, moving sideways to higher. Uh, we're not taking out the high of uh, this bar where the selling came in. And you'll see prices then come back and close below the five bar moving average. And it's a case of jumping ship and taking the profits off the table. So in the afternoon, prices uh, have moved higher. We'd had the PPI figures out in the pre uh, Prior to the news, uh, we'd seen the market drop significantly, but as soon as the PPI figures uh, were released, which uh, oddly enough uh, came out uh, worse than forecast, but this was good news because they weren't as bad as they thought they were going to be, is what was the reason and rationale to move prices back up. So prices came all the way back to the previous day's close and the DP level. However, a bit of volatility to start with. You'll see prices open and uh, move lower. You can see again, you've got selling in this area here. We can see it with the red bar there and also resistance here, also preceded by some potential weakness. So prices move uh, down. You can see that there. We get a uh, sell signal. And as I've said before, and I'll say again, when you get uh, a sell signal, a buy signal just after the open, you want to consider taking those profits because unless the market is really forcing itself in one or the other direction, then in particular here as well, where you've got the DP level and uh, the previous day's close, you are going to find support. You've also got support over here as well, where we have the first profit target, uh, the scalp. So you'll see prices uh, come through. They'll go down to the scalp level. And then you'll see them start to come back at this point. If you're pulling the trigger, you're going to get uh, 10 points or more as prices come through. And you'll see 
um, coming off the low as well. The, part, the market's closed here, it's come off the lows, it's now back below the profit target. And as we know, they want the markets higher, they want to be above that DP level, and that's precisely what we see. And we also notice that they are taking their profits also when they move down here. And also those that were short, they just took out all of the stops as they brought the market back. So prices uh, are now uh, sideways to higher and we can see that uh, uh, even trying to move higher, we've got a bit of selling pressure there as they drive markets up. Uh, it's a shame that we've got the BRN in the way here and also the selling here. We know that we're going to have to drive through this level in order to move higher. So we'll see prices uh, starting to struggle. Uh, no surprise really because you've got this and this in the way here. Let me just change the color of this. You've got the selling here and the selling here and until the selling's removed by looking at the volume and prices remain above the 20 bar and 5 bar and in particular the DP, uh, then uh, the market's got a chance of actually moving higher. So the market uh, moves uh, to the upside. We see an increase in volume. It doesn't color green because of the the shape of the price bar that's anything but we can see that it's above the average there and then prices start to move to the upside and uh, again we've got some potential weakness no surprise because we've got selling to the left uh, still that we need to get through so price is uh, attempting to do this and uh, failing and it's a case of if market closes back below the brn then it's uh, we're going to see a retest before we can move to the upside. So at this point, uh, given that uh, we're not making any progress, I decided to uh, pull the trade. There was no movement to the upside and we've got uh, a lot of selling in this bar as well. The volume is greater than the previous bar. And just a matter of waiting to see if the market would sort itself out. Uh, you'll see prices now moving back and uh, this is what happened uh, they continued to the downside we didn't get a sell signal we went back through the dp but look where we ended up bang on the 200 uh, ma also uh, 62 percent retracement from this low uh, to this high as well so the market uh, sitting on the 200 ma and uh, then it starts to make its way back after oscillating for a bit in the sideways range and then price is coming back. And as I've said before, they want the market above the DP. And you'll see them drive this through now, as uh, or they attempt to on this uh, occasion. And then uh, prices start to move to the upside. There we go, that's what I was after. So now we've got uh, a change. Uh, we've got a, an entry point just above the DP, which is good. This is actually lower now than the uh, BRN that we had uh, from the previous uh, buy signal. So we've got uh, the opportunity to have a run at uh, a resistance. If you can't uh, uh, get through it, then you have to go further back and then take a bigger run. And that's what we're seeing here. So now prices start to move to the upside and uh, we take out uh, the BRN stops uh, a break even. Uh, just come back there somewhere around here you'll see it flash up on the screen there you go just moving the stop to break even and uh, a case of uh, now deciding what to do and manage the trade we've got uh, this resistance here there are 39 points on the table but if we can take out this area then we're free to move higher so it's worth just waiting to see if the market will do this and it starts to do it and then uh, what we're looking at now is this area where the market is likely to start uh, failing. And again, just give it a moment or two. Prices remain above the five bar moving average. Uh, this resistance is still holding at the moment. But again, given the uh, momentum that it's got at the moment, we're looking for a blast up to the next target price. Bit of potential weakness there coming into the market, but we're still closing above the five bar moving average, uh, which is the positive. And then we hit the next psychological level. Now, if you want to exit at this point, there is absolutely nothing wrong with uh, doing that because uh, 
you've had a, a good run here. Well, 66 points is a brilliant uh, move anyway in a short space of time. And now you'll see the market starting to struggle. The prices uh, come back below the five bar moving average, uh, as you can see there. Continue sideways. If you didn't get out the first time, you've got a retracement there to consider getting out. But uh, there's nothing wrong with taking the profits at those BRNs when you've got uh, uh, 60 odd points. And that ends the trading session for the Friday afternoon. OK, so let's have a quick look, see what the market's done on the overnight. So you can see the prices have gapped higher and we're trading above the 89% uh, Fib retracement drawn from this high to this low and projected back. So uh, prices are moving to the upside in the way, though, they've got uh, the high of here, which needs to be taken out, which is uh, 12845. We'll just move that over and uh, save it so I can reference this uh, as prices continue to move to the upside. So there's the bigger picture. Of course, we need to take out uh, the recent high that we see here as well at uh, 12929. And then from there, we're up to uh, 13,182. So prices uh, gapped higher, traded higher. I can see uh, some weakness there. Then prices uh, move lower, trading down to the 200 bar MA. And uh, since then, they've bounced off this area. And uh, again, you can see this happening now uh, as the Dow moves higher as well. So prices uh, moving back to the upside. Again, to uh, show that uh, we're still long in the uh, daily chart and we need to take out uh, the resistance areas that we have uh, here. So uh, prices at the moment showing some sort of support. And also, uh, if we have a look in a bit more detail, we will find somewhere in here. There we go, above the DP area as well. Uh, the low is uh, quite a distance away. But uh, should prices uh, move lower, keep an eye on this one. But uh, I would uh, be looking at uh, Friday's high uh, on this occasion to uh, make sure prices uh, remain above this level. This and the close will be crucial. So from last week's No News Week, uh, this week we've got a shed load for you. And uh, we start off uh, today with the Bank of England Bailey speaking at uh, 4.30 p.m. No idea what he's talking about, uh, probably the usual inane drivel uh, of how we're going to get a V-shaped recovery and the amount of money that we're printing at the moment is not a problem. Anyway, Tuesday, uh, we've got uh, medium impact news items, but like I've said before, they've downgraded a lot of the uh, um, uh, high impact news items to medium, which is slightly odd. So I don't know why CPI all of a sudden and G GDP so we've got to keep an eye on these. Um, so Tuesday, even though they look like medium impact, which we would have ignored, um, I would uh, pay attention to this, particularly uh, something like this, where the previous quarterly GDP was minus 20. They're now forecasting 5%, um, which is the minus 24 plus 5 uh, in this uh, regard. Uh, and also CPI is a high impact news item as well. So again, I don't know why for the downgrade of these. Just treat all of the medium impacts at the moment as high impacts. I think that's the uh, solution there. Uh, Wednesday, CPI again, UK and uh, industrial production, crude oil inventories, which used to be a high impact as well, but is no longer. Uh, let's get into the meat of um, what's going on. Uh, later in the week, we've got uh, Thursday is a lot uh, out. We've got uh, the US uh, claim count again, uh, forecast this time at just half a million job losses, just half a million. Uh, but that's not uh, right when it's released. Um, Bank of England credits to conditions. And then we've got uh, some proper high impact news items uh, highlighted. They see there you go. Retail sales is uh, always been and core retails and PPI, but yet they were downgraded. So yeah, Thursday gets a bit more interesting. And we start the week with Bailey and we finish with uh, Bailey as well at 11 a.m. And uh, next weekend, uh, we've probably got a Zoom G20 meeting. I can't see the meeting in person, so we're given the current climate. So keep an eye on uh, that over the weekend as well, which uh, obviously is quite a way at this time. 
Okay, that will do it uh, for this one. If there is anything else to report, I will let you know. But as ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.